Hi everybody, back again today. Troy from the Do It Yourself World and the Cold Off Grid Project. Uh, got my protective eyewear, protective hearing gear, and my now becoming famous protective footwear, sandals, no socks. Uh, a lot of comments about that. Reason is I am uh, running in and out of the house. I don't wear shoes in the house. Socks get filthy with the running around in and out like I'm doing. So I'm going without socks. Sandals are quick slip on and off. So I'm doing, what I'm doing today, I've been, it's uh, 5 o'clock already. I've worked on my websites, I've worked on my forum, I've worked on some other work, I've worked on YouTube, I've worked on comments. There's always a lot of discussion about what I do with my day. Well, YouTube is my job. And then everything after that is working on projects that I can record so I can go to YouTube, which is my job. Um, it does take a lot of time on videos, and that's why I usually don't get started on projects till later in the afternoon hours, and it is just how it is. And today I had to run into town and do some paperwork and some other stuff, and it is how it is. Um, building stuff has become, in a way, is your hobby. You go to work, 9 to 5, you get home from work, and then you start your hobbies in your garage or your wood shop or whatever. And same here. I get up in the morning, work from 9 to 5 on YouTube, and then I go to my work, or my hobbies, which is building stuff. Which, by the way, I then record so that I can go to work tomorrow and then work again on 9 to 5 job, which is YouTube. Anyway, I'm using scrap pieces of wood. These are cutoffs that are from my... Uh, furring strips from the um, w when I was working inside and these are shorter pieces that I probably won't be using in the tiny house now on the walls so now what I'm doing is making my closets which are now going to be built portable since I don't have the material to finish the roof yet or the ceiling yet I should say and I want to get to work on closets but yet I don't want to work in such a way that I won't be able to finish the uh, the ceiling. So the, the closets are going to be portable. 32 inches wide and 24 inches deep and going to come just short of the ceiling height. Then I'll be able to hang my clothes in the closets and underneath I'll have a pull-out drawer with um, socks and underwear or whatever you want to put down there push it closed, close the door, and you're done. So, the it's a very simple plan. I've been working on this for days, thinking about it, but it's just going to have a, a, a top, a frame top using scrap lumber, and then I'm going to use the heavier wood, which you see here behind me, really thick wood. Not because I need thick wood, but because that's what I've got available. It's going to take me some time prying that all apart, so it's going to be slow going with all the nails in there. But I've got to do it, and then I'll get some of those boards apart. And then the idea is that's going to be the uprights. So I'm going to have four heavy, massive uprights. And then to hold the rod, I'm going to use pieces of 2 by 6 with holes cut out, and possibly one in the middle, although that's not a big span. But I still might hang one in the middle anyway. I'll keep my options open um, so that the pole never sags. But 32 inches is not that wide. I can always add in a piece in the middle if I feel the need. So let's get working. My batteries are cold. Everything's cold. It's 46 degrees. Everything's sluggish. And I don't like the blade I put in here. I'm not impressed with the new blade I bought. I'm not happy with it because it it uh, it binds. The original Rayobi blade, I wish I knew what brand it was and where it was from because it was really, really good. The original blade was quite awesome. So there's the width of the closet, 32 inches, not really wide, but I measured the, um, 
uh, dollar store clothes rack, which I actually bought one day and found out it was too tall for my house. So I'm going to chop it shorter at one point and use it anyway. It's one of those movable clothing racks. It was only $10 and uh, I'm going to chop it shorter so I can fit it in there. But I'm using it as a guideline. That's 36 inches um, from end of frame to end of frame. The actual hanging space is 34. So 32 is pretty good. So I want to go with a 24 inch depth which I've calculated by going into the motorhome, the RV, and looking at that closet. So I know exactly what I got going on. So we've got, uh, these are three and a half, three and a quarter inches together. I'm measuring the thickness of this so I know how big a piece I'm gonna cut for the, uh, the framing up on top. I'll have a square frame up top. So anyway, so we're gonna have 24 inches minus three and a quarter. All right, well, I'm going to do this measurement in piece because for some stupid reason, when the camera's rolling, I can't think. It's weird. I'm still not used to it, I guess, and I feel like I'm being watched. So I'll be back in a minute. All right, I got my pieces cut, and I marked where I'm going to put my holes. I'm going to pre-drill this for the screws that are going to hold this all together. Now there's going to be some OSB on the top to give it rigidity and strength. Nice clean square cuts. I've got to figure out there's my screws. battery. So swapping around is not cool. Running low on batteries. Haven't seen the sun in days so uh, my power in the house is a little bit low which is standard with off-grid living on solar. No sun equals no power after quite a few days. I haven't seen the sun in psh, I don't know a week? It's been a week. Okay, that should be strong. It's gonna fight me. Can be a large closet, which is good. Now that I see it coming together. For those of you who are blessed to live in a warm climate, you don't have to worry about it. But us, those of us in the uh, colder areas, like upstate New York. We have to have extra winter clothes. We have four seasons of clothing, so I need extra. And a lot of tiny house owners may live in warmer climates. I don't know. I know RV dwellers live in warmer climates for the most part, because it's just nicer. But uh, I have a lot of clothing, and I have sports clothing, and hunting clothing, and swimming clothing, and everything else, so whatever. To me, tiny house living, although it means minimalistic living, in a lot of ways, it doesn't have to be, doesn't have to mean throwing out everything and having only two shirts, which some people do. 
And I'm not knocking it. It's just not me. So there's the top of my closet. All right, nice and strong. It is pretty rigid. I'm happy. Now, I'm going to build the legs, which is going to take me some time because I've got to separate the wood from off of here. Just going to be a real nightmare. So I'm going to try to pry some pieces off if I can. I'm going to measure and see what I've got available here to work with. So I'm going to shut off the camera and I'll be back in a bit once I get some worked out here. Hi, I'm always working on something without the camera and then people complain that I'm not working because I really don't have much on video. Uh, I always forget the camera. So, here I am. Might as well show you what I'm doing here. I'm breaking apart this pallet because it's going to be... Um, the pieces are 47 and a half inches long, which with the framing and everything is going to put me just over 48. And my ceiling is 5 foot height, so that's perfect. It gives me a little storage above and the clothes will hang nicely. So. I'm going to take off these pieces of this pallet. This again from that small engine shop. Free, free wood. This is good solid wood too. Really nice stuff. So anyway, I've got one more piece left. This is attached to a lot of framing on the side. That'd be a nightmare to work with, but that would give me one, two, three for the next. And then there's this. Well, I might as well take it apart while I'm at it. Then I got these pieces. I want to finish this. We're going to fast forward this section for you just so you don't get bored. I know you love that. So we're going to finish taking this apart. Hi guys, Troy and Felix from the do-it-yourself world and the off-grid project. Uh, just a reminder, if you haven't got your off-grid project t-shirt, um, the booster campaign is running right now. There's Felix saying hi to the camera and uh, doing what cats do. Uh, if you haven't got your t-shirt yet, please go ahead, follow the link below and get the off-grid project t-shirt before it's too late. I am running various colors this time and various types of shirts. And this is again as a reminder to uh, raise the funds to bring Melanie home. I'm not asking for donations, although it would be nice, but buy your t-shirt if you haven't got one yet. And we are dealing with overseas customers. So if you live overseas, um, please grab your shirt. Thank you and uh, see you all later. Okay, that's done. Now, I've got to put my shop back together. I've got the good pieces here that we want to use next. I'll lay them down over here. I need four of them for this closet, and I'll need 
Uh, I want to make two closets if I have enough daylight hours left today. I know I did use a lot of time on the computer today, but work has to be done anyway. This big boy can go back up there. I don't know if I'm going to need that or not. The boards on that. I hope not because those are really nailed down well. It's not going to be fun to take them off. I'll tell you what, an organized wood shop is an amazing thing to have. It is good. And I have plans for organizing this even better in the future. Uh, I'm going to put some hanging things here for all my tools right up in front of me for like hearing protection and everything. It's going to be nice. So now we got to get these nails out. Yeah, see having everything neat would be beneficial here in this case because the debt workshop gets cluttered, the uh, workspace gets cluttered, and you get all your tools in the way and everything. So, and then they're going to fall in a minute here. I've got to take these nails out. We're going to pause here and speed this up for your entertainment. I'm going to get the rest of these. I'm going to get, for now, just four boards prepped. So there's one. Then I'll have the framing for this. Okay, now I've got, I just double checked that they're all the same height to be precise. And now a little bit awkward situation. Now I've got to figure a way to uh, uh, hook these together on an uneven ground. Unless I take them in the house and finish assembly in the house might be an option. Because there at least I have a flat space to work on. Might be the best way to go. I'm not sure if I can do this on the workbench. By the way, I got these two for like 50 cents, I think they were. Yeah, they were 49 cents for two pry bars at Tractor Supply. Uh, I go to Tractor Supply and find amazing discounts on tools. Really incredible deals on tools over there. This was uh, 50 cents. It's a special type of a wrench. 50 cents. It says here, basin wrench. Um, end of season closeouts, Tractor Supply is the place to go. So now, our closet is going to be about this big, and the side walls are like this. Alright. I might just be able to do it in here, but I think it's going to be awkward. Because if I do it inside, then I've got dust and filth from pre-drilling. I think I'm going to take it all inside. It's just going to be easier. I'll have to clean up later, but hey, that's fine. It's going to be easier. I'm 
try to put this together in a flat surface in the house rather than here. And then try to carry it inside, assembled, forget it. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to assemble the base as well, which will be three pieces. Well, I guess I can do it four. It won't hurt a thing to have it four. It'll be stronger. Make it a solid square base. I was going to make it three, but the base is only, what, three quarter inch high, so it's not a big deal. I'm going to do that. I'm going to assemble the base, which will be the same as this. And I've already got one piece cut, a 32 incher. So I'm going to go ahead and do that and then take everything inside. So I'll see you in a few minutes here. Before I go in, because I'm losing daylight, I have taken a piece of scrap wood, as you can see it was from the pallet, and I've marked it, and what I've done is marked it 6 inches at 8 inches, and right here at 6 inches I'm going to put my hole with a hole saw, alright, I'm going to drill through here, and then I'm going to make two of these, and then I'm going to screw that on to the uh, framing, the top piece of the frame of the closet, and that's what the clothing rod is going to hang on. And then when I put the OSB or plywood on the outsides, that rod will be in place, held in place permanently. If I ever need to break through, I just drill a hole through and take out the rod if it ever breaks. But anyway, I've got the hole saw, my dwindling battery supply, I've got my drill. I'm going to drill that hole for the rod. And it didn't break through. I was hoping it would break through. Don't know, that's not long enough, just too short. Losing daylight out here. Of course, it never was really daylight today. It was dark light today. There it is. That's a thick plug. Now, I've got the board for my curtain rod. Now, through all the years of living and learning, I didn't cut this before drilling. I'm going to cut both holes before I drill. And there's the rod, and that slips right through there. Nice and easy. Clothes will hang on there. I'm going to do the same thing on this other side here. And then I've got a bunch of staples to remove afterwards. Actually, I should make sure they're not going to hit in there. Really getting dark fast on me now. See, this is with this reclaimed lumber. It's great because it's free. But it does require some work preparing it. Now the OSB the other day, that was a nightmare. That stuff was full of uh, staples. A lot of staples.
Now I try to work neat and keep the staples off the ground. In case I ever have anything with tires out here. Staples and nails. I try to keep all the staples and nails off the ground. And for feet. So I don't hurt my feet. And one day I'm going to have a massive tin of survival fasteners. So I'm going to mark this at 6 inches and at 8 inches like I did with the other one. 6 inches is where the center of the hole is going to be and 8 inches will give me some meat underneath to hold that weight of the clothing. I've heard rumors that girls love their clothing and happen to have a little bit of stuff on hand so uh, it's just a joke. I've got a lot of clothing. Now, same deal over here. Actually, I'm going to pre drill. Oh, wow. getting dark. Did I say it's getting dark? No, I stop a lot because this thing is hot. And to kick out the sawdust from the blade. There it is. Now I'll cut them off. Then we can go inside and work on the uh, closet. I'll assemble it indoors. I hope I don't forget any pieces while I'm here. I'm going to make another one hopefully yet tonight as well. It's only 6.30 going on 7 o'clock maybe. I'm hoping to make another one yet tonight. Um, I might have to come out here with some lighting, LED lights, and it's going to be, yeah, it's going to be interesting work, but I'll see what I can do. Make sure there's no metal in there for a new blade. Another problem with reclaimed lumber. I'm not impressed with that new blade. And there is the uh, side for holding the clothes, <coughs> the post. Well, I'm making this up as I go along, honestly. This is not by any plans or instructions I found. I am making this up as I go. I just sat in a chair designing it upstairs, just staring at my space and figuring this out. Hopefully, they're both the same. Bummer if they're not, right? I can see through it. It's good. Okay, now... I'll be needing all of this indoors. Um, I think I'm going to go ahead and put these on here now. Minimize the dirt and filth that is carried into the house. What was that? Oh. Oh yeah, it's gonna be good to organize this wood shop. Be really nice. Boy, that gets tight. Let's 
So with time I'll start putting in more shelving out here and get stuff organized better. Put my tools away better. Be a good place to work. Have things hanging on the walls. We'll hook this place up. That goes there. Everything has its place now. Okay. Now, I'm going to take the top. And I'm going to put this, I know it's getting dark to see, I'm sorry about that, but I can't change that. I don't have light out here yet. So what I'm going to do is measure the center of the top right across. So we've got a 24 foot span here, so obviously it's going to be at 12 is dead center. Okay. And then we're going to put these posts on. They're going to hang right on here. We're going to put them on now so that they're there and I've got less drilling and screwing indoors less mess it's gonna be enough of a mess when I'm there anyway so now this is two and a half so I've got to come over one and a quarter on each side of that let me see one and a quarter there we are that's half. This is awkward. I need this. Something flat. It's getting dark. I can't see anymore. <clears throat> I'm losing light. Should fit into there. Oh, my measurements are off. Uh huh. I did that right. Oh well, I want to mark under this. Line that line up with that line. Marking so I can screw that on dead center onto the wood, onto the frame of the closet. It's getting harder to see what I'm doing. So we're going to have it like this. See, this is going to stand up now. Make sure I do it the right way. All right, just like that. outside as well anyway uh, I won't bore you with all that because it's getting too dark to see anyway I'm just gonna mark this on the outside dead center and then I'm gonna screw these on and then we'll take all this indoors where there's light <laughs> 